join thousands of NFT traders who already start their day on Crypto Slam. With a portfolio worth over 270 billion US dollars, it is one of the world's largest investment firms. And with a quarter of its money invested in the financial sector, how is Tomasic looking at Bitcoin and other digital assets? It's one of the most promising areas and is definitely getting a lot of attention from within the firm. And we will continue to grow both the venture building side of our business as we hopefully deliver more and more successful outcomes, as well as the investing side. And what does Singapore's increased crypto scrutiny mean for digital asset owners and crypto firms in the Lion City? Coming up on this special edition of Word on the Block on location from Singapore, Prati Agrawal, Managing Director for Blockchain Investments at Tomasic, joins in to dive deep into those topics and a whole lot more. Crypto projects are a dime a dozen, but finding the right one to back is key. Welcome to Word on the Block, the series that takes a deeper dive into blockchain and all the emerging technologies that shape our world at the intersection of business, politics, and economy. It's what we cover right here on Forecast News. I'm Editor-in-Chief Angie Lau. Today, we are in conversation with Prati Agrawal. He's Managing Director of Blockchain Investments at Tomasic, one of three financial institutions that are backed by Singapore, the city-state's government. Now, the question is, what is Tomasic betting on? Are they just an investment arm or are they something more? Prati, welcome to Word on the Block and thank you for welcoming us to your Lion City. Oh, thank you for this opportunity and welcome to Singapore. <laughs> Singapore is one of those cities that always hits above its weight class. Uh, and you know, for a lot of people, Tomasic is one of its champions. What you're doing in this space in global investment is really interesting. And specifically, I want to ask you about blockchain. When did you start the investment arm in blockchain for Tomasic and why? Yeah. So our efforts uh, took seed in 2018, uh, quite appropriately, the last crypto winter. Um, as we speak, the judgment is out, but <laughs> we might be at the onset of the next one. Um, the thinking at our end has been driven primarily by what we've seen in the technology world in the last decade plus of global activity. Uh, historically, we've applied two lenses. One is a geographic lens, so there are markets that we want to focus on. Uh, in addition, we've always looked at vertical industries. Uh, what we found over time, though, is the lines have blurred. Uh, let's take examples like Gojek or Grab in the region, or Airbnb more globally. Uh, it's difficult to put that under one vertical. Uh, we've also realized the acceleration of a number of horizontal technology areas. Um, so we've been focusing for the last four to five years on areas like AI, blockchain, cybersecurity. Uh, so this effort is actually part of this broader effort at Tamasic to look horizontal across industries uh, in addition to geographic focus. Um, in the blockchain area in particular, uh, we've been fascinated by the pace of innovation, both from a technical perspective, but also the emergence of new business models. Mm -hmm. uh, in a sense, uh, Web3 has now become the term, which is being used more commonly. But really, we see this as an iteration of the internet where a uh, move away from very centralized business models. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, two lens, and we'll talk about it more today. Um, how can we accelerate the building of businesses in this area? Yeah. So we've gone beyond simply being investors. So we've actually been building ventures. Yeah, you're uh, also an incubator. Uh, so a little so bit more than incubator. Very, okay, we, I'm happy to elaborate us. on that. Yeah. Um, and of course, looking to support some of the best projects uh, on the investment side, uh, which as you can imagine is not an easy task given how early the space is. Um, and we discuss this internally. Uh, we think of it increasingly as a new form factor as yeah. opposed to an asset class. Uh, so that's really what our focus is. I want to dig into that a little bit more because it's absolutely true. You can be a venture uh, hub or an incubator, whatever you want to call it. But if you're going to look internally and start building, I mean, that's a different business proposition. It's, it's slightly different than just allocating capital to teams that you know are talented. We look at ideas which we think are game changing, which we think can have massive impact. Yep. Our first focus is to see that our existing projects or teams working on it. 
if projects exist, teams are already working on it. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Uh, either directly or through our fund partners, we will go and back these projects. Um, there's absolutely no need for us to come in and build in those areas. Uh, but there are areas where we actually find that teams are not building. It actually needs institutions like ourselves mm -hmm. to either come in by ourselves or in most cases, pull in other like-minded partners to move things forward. I'll, I'll give you a concrete example. Uh, let's take payments. Everybody knows that we need a real-time payment solution as far as both institutional payments and retail payments are concerned. Uh, on the retail side, we found interesting projects like the DM project, which uh, since has folded. Yeah. And we had strong conviction driven by the fact that today, if I want to send money to a friend in any part of the world, be it the States or be it in China, or in India or Indonesia, I actually cannot do it on a real-time basis. I have to go through traditional banking channels. Now, obviously, I can do that with crypto. Uh, but if I'm trying to go through regulator channels, it was just not possible right. historically. Um, so we didn't reinvent the wheel there. We actually backed DM as a strategic investor. Uh, but when it comes to wholesale payments, uh, we didn't come across any solution. So we've co-created a platform called Patior along with JP Morgan uh, with DBS and a number of industry participants to create a real-time wholesale payments network as mm -hmm. a start. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to layer on additional use cases which were not possible using traditional technology. Mm -hmm. So this is just an example of how we think about the space. So we don't really see this as um, different. We just see it as what's the problem statement and how do we as Tamasic play a role in solving for some real customer needs um, and put our capital behind it. Look, it took a lot of insight to even start a blockchain Web3 investment arm in Tomasic in 2018. Arguably, Singapore very conservative, Tomasic obviously very revered, but also very conservative. So why are you opening up an investment arm in a space that at the time, and I know this intimately, where everybody thought this space was over, crypto winter? Uh, so we... You could say we're conservative or you could say we're calibrated. Mm -hmm. um, it depends how you want to sort of classify us. Uh, four years back, it was a bold move. Mm -hmm. uh, I will not take credit for that. Um, I'll call it for our then senior management C-suite led by Dilan Songhui, um, in particular, who have driven that effort and asked us to sort of nudge into this area. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, when we first started, we didn't go all in. The approach we generally take in areas like this, especially in the crypto and blockchain space, was to build a deep understanding. Mm -hmm. First, do we understand the technology? Do we have conviction? And then we've slowly built our way into, we have now have built five startups in the broader data portability, open infrastructure space. We started by doing small investing initially, mainly through fund structures. And as we found projects of interest and actually uh, saw real innovation, We've now stepped up to saying a pretty broad fund investment portfolio, but also direct investing. So you started out funding funds. Was there one startup that you remember going, oh my gosh, we're so lucky that we, that was one of our first and now it's this. What, what would that be? Yeah, so uh, we usually don't talk about the underlying uh, fund investments, but what I, I mean, I, I maybe call out a couple of interesting projects that I sure. came across. Um, so suddenly there was a big, amount of news flow around NBA top shots. And it was interesting because for the first time, you had seen the evolution of something like a CryptoKitties yes. into something more mainstream yeah. and useful. And that was the first instance of NFTs, uh, non-fungible tokens, which really came into play. Um, one of the funds had exposure to the flow protocol, which is the underlying protocol, uh, which will sort of drive that. Equally, we came across projects which were solving for wallets. Um, a lot of the issues are today around key infrastructure. If I'm holding digital assets, what happens if I lose the key as a consumer? So we found, for example, an Israeli company which has been focusing on how do I create a keyless wallet infrastructure, so on and so forth, right? So real world problems, really interesting, scalable infrastructure, uh, and then of course, you know, blooming of applications. So uh, it's been fascinating. I mean, we're very clear. We don't want to be head in the sand, just. Mm in the few ideas that we believe in and are executing against, but we are able to see now a very wide range of interesting opportunities. In fact, I think the 
the key thing for us from here is how do we prioritize our time yeah. because in this space you could almost be like a kid in a candy store <laughs> there's so much happening that you could kind of look here look there and there's you know i need a lot of opportunities well this is a very unique peek under the hood of tomasic and when we come back when word on the block returns what exactly are they making their next big bet in blockchain with a 381 billion net portfolio how much of that is going to go into crypto when we come back after the break how is tomasic singapore's sovereign wealth fund looking at bitcoin we are very focused on backing the best projects that's really where we are spending a lot of time and activity and later what does pretty agrawal think is the future of web3 when word on the block returns Welcome back to Word on the Block. We are with Pradeep Agrawal, uh, managing director of Tomasic. But sometimes they forget that you are the managing director of blockchain investments in Tomasic because you are creating companies and businesses, and so you're kind of like putting on your different hat as a startup founder almost. Yeah, we're just having fun. Uh, <laughs> I'm just having fun while the rest of the firm pays the bills. <laughs> so you've done everything from. make sure hr is happy and your staff is happy to i mean tell us some more stories here yeah so uh we've taken a very different path where we essentially said um we want to build businesses um in white spaces um in doing so i've done everything from actually picking office space to opening bank accounts till date i'm uh authorizing transactions uh in by going into my bank account i uh, had situations where someone said if we don't get you know a uh, part of your software up and running in the next 30 minutes we're going to sort of withdraw our contract and all sorts of situations it's great fun um it's it's also great for us um to look under the hood and really see what it takes to build these amazing businesses and most people only look at the successful outcomes yeah um and it's been fascinating Uh, but most importantly it's been amazing working with some of the best talent who coalesced around these really difficult problem statements that we've taken everything from movement of money to tokenizing capital markets to helping with data portability these are really difficult problem statements and the kind of talent that's come together to solve these problems uh just been an absolute riot and all of these are covid babies uh they, are they COVID have babies. all come up on zoom calls and uh in many instances people had till recently not even met each other yeah uh so it's fascinating what the human spirit can achieve and what's actually possible with uh, a good mix of talent and mission orientation i mean in this way uh, we've experienced that ourselves 2020 was such an accelerator for this space and truly a disruptor but i would say that not necessarily the people already participating in the space but everybody else who wasn't and realized oh wait a second i got to get there really fast and that was the accelerator most certainly and and it's been fascinating to see certain trends accelerate at a pace which would have not been possible in mm-hmm. the last 2 years there's so many variables that have changed so many assumptions that we were all making yeah. as a given for so many years have just been thrown out of the window um and i and it's 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 it'd be interesting to see what happens in the next few years as hopefully the world normalizes yeah i hope we don't go back into a little bit of a status quo if somebody were to look at the venture space the vc space the investment space what are you doing that they should be doing as well in terms of you've been in the space for a while the things that you have learned that are new that are innovative that is game changer for you What is the best practice that you you can kind of share? What I would share by way of observation is um the pace of innovation now none of us can keep a mm-hmm. uh, pace with it. It is becoming truly distributed and I don't mean this in a crypto context only. Uh there is this new found confidence not just in the valley 
but in entrepreneur talent on a global basis. Uh, therefore, I guess the one thing we are doing as a firm is very, very focused on staying up to speed on trends on a sector agnostic basis. And, mm -hmm. and I started by talking about us taking a horizontal view increasingly. Um, and then really figuring out that how do we adjust our strategies in order to gain exposure? I mean, fundamentally as a capital provider, uh, we have to direct our capital in the most efficient and impactful manner yeah. possible. Um, a few years back, when we started talking about sustainability, I will say, me included, there was some degree of skepticism internally as to why are we talking so much about sustainability? Is this lip service? Uh, with passage of time, we've come to realize that it is goes beyond just investing in a particular opportunity. Actually, it's an existential risk to our portfolio. And if we don't take the right steps, just purely being economic minded, leaving aside the need to make contributions to society, uh, we will fall behind if we don't understand and act on the need for climate change and sustainability. So this applies across any number of areas. Yeah. So I would put our activities in blockchain and crypto in that context yeah. of making sure that we are acting with both humility and awareness on what's happening around us. And then, yeah, uh, making sure we have the right exposure and contributing in the best way possible. Capital allocation ratio of your portfolio. It is close to $400 billion right now, your net portfolio. How much of that is bet in blockchain and crypto? Um, we actually don't do top-down allocations, um, irrespective of which vertical, horizontal, or geography. Uh, we let the portfolio develop over a period of time. Um, um, what I would say today is that it's not a very large component of our portfolio simply because it's a relatively new area. Mm -hmm. um, over time, we are committed to continue to making investments in the space and to grow along with the companies and the broader space. Um, it's one of the most promising areas and it's definitely getting a lot of attention from within the firm. And we will continue to grow both the venture building side of our business as we hopefully deliver more and more successful outcomes, as well as the investing side. And word on the street is that you are also buying Bitcoin. So we, it is one of those uh, misinformations which we have chosen not to comment on because I don't think it was part of the mainstream media. Um, we don't comment on our direct investing activities. Um, we are very focused on backing the best projects. Mm -hmm. That's really where we are spending a lot of our time and activity. Today, Tamasic does not own Bitcoin, since you asked me this very uh, pointed question. Uh, but that is not a statement on uh, whether we like Bitcoin or whether we want to own Bitcoin or not. I mean, that is just a factual uh, statement of fact for where mm -hmm. we are today. Mm -hmm. um, where we are very, very focused is looking at which are the emerging protocols, where is the utility. Yeah. That is central to all of our activities. But part of that is tokenization. And a lot of protocols don't have equity. They raise through tokens. So de facto, you are, or your funds, owning crypto in some of these protocols. Is that, yeah. that's within your realm? So Tomasic has a flexible mandate. Mm -hmm. uh, we can gain exposure or seek to gain exposure to areas which we think are of interest to us and will deliver appropriate risk-adjusted returns. Um, so yes, uh, it's within our mandate to uh, be able to own tokens, but to be able to own and hold and act on tokens, you need a completely different set of infrastructure. Yeah, um, I mean, you don't want to necessarily be in the treasury management space. Uh, well, one is that, second is there is a new set of risks that comes with owning this new form factor. Right. And therefore, we are getting ready in terms of being able to deal with tokenized assets. Uh, but I would say it will need some time to make yeah. sure that it meets our operating risk requirements and that we can do it at scale. Something we're very focused on. Um, uh, in the meantime, we're more focused right now on uh, tracking down and supporting uh, projects in the space. And I want to hear more about that, where you're placing your next big bets where Tomasic fits in this ecosystem, and where Singapore fits into this Web3 world of ours when we come back. On the other side, what does Tomasic think of the current crypto market correction? And have we hit the bottom yet? More when we come back. If you
don't understand the future, you'll never see your place in it. Introducing Forecast Plus, covering all things blockchain, independent reporting, insights, and access from Asia to the world. We cut through the noise where technology, insights, and access meet, where smart conversations happen. Make friends with disruption. Forecast Plus. We are back with Pradi Agrawal of Tomasic and making big bets. Everybody wants to know. We understand the thinking, the experience, how you're applying this knowledge into blockchain, Web3, crypto bets. What are the bets in this space? A lot of people are just really interested to hear what your future thesis is for Web3. No, more than happy to share. Um, uh, two broad areas coming back to the framework that we operate in. Um, the first is in the area of building ventures. Um, what we've been working on for the last two years, which is fairly public, is in three broad areas. I wouldn't strictly put that under blockchain or Web3. It is more around decentralization. Mm -hmm. uh, I increasingly describe it as making the internet we know better. Um, mm -hmm. It's something that a number of founders have been working on. Um, the first area is just around money. How do you make money move more efficiently? How do you introduce new programmatic uh, use cases around that? Uh, use cases which are not possible using today's infrastructure. Um, an entity called Pathior, uh, which I've referred to earlier in this conversation. Uh, second is in the area of capital markets. Mm -hmm. um, trillions of dollars of assets with a great degree of inefficiencies, silos, and eventually hoping to create more liquidity on this as we digitize capital market flows. Uh, so an effort we've had with Singapore Exchange called Market Node. Um, that one is more regionally focused initially because it's a big opportunity in Asia as a start. Uh, and the third one, which is uh, extremely ambitious uh, around data portability. Uh, think of it as helping information to travel with individuals, businesses, making it verifiable. Um, a group of companies called Affinity, Good Worker, Tristana, which are working on these problem statements in many different ways. And then now the next wave of ventures that we are dabbling in, potentially creating everything from the creator economy, musicians, uh, virtual worlds. Mm -hmm. um, those are very early stage thinking at our end. And mm -hmm. you know, if we find validated opportunities, we will launch those into ventures. So that's the building side of our business. Mm -hmm. um, or the investing side, I wouldn't use the words big bets. Um, they're fairly calibrated mm -hmm. in our approach. Um, we are going after big ideas. Um, mm -hmm. We are very focused on deepening our understanding of the protocol layer because these are really the primitives in the space on which people are building. Um, over time, we hope to build exposure uh, in this area, both directly and through our funds who already have exposure. Uh, we've been looking at centralized uh, financial institutions infrastructure. So we've done investments like FTX, Amber, uh, but also access points into the infrastructure, things like consensus with MetaMask and Infura and their yeah. tools. Uh, but more broadly, looking at applications in the decentralized finance, DeFi area, uh, things in the NFT space. So we've looked at companies like Immutable where we are invested in but looking at other projects which can help make these more mainstream, uh, including gaming. Uh, yeah. It's been one of my pet ideas for the last three years. How do you actually take a digital skin or an asset in one gaming environment and seamlessly utilize it in some other game, which is coming from a different publisher? Yes. So these are some of the concepts which are not possible today. But as projects make these things a reality, we would want to be investing in these areas. So I would say that these themes are probably not unique to Tamasek, uh, but these are fairly early and some very interesting work happening in the space and we're looking to get behind these big ideas. You led the round for Amber. This is one of the big um, you know, crypto investment, crypto exchange firms that are coming out of Asia. Is it a Asia bet? Is it a Singapore bet? So the mask is always operated with a global mandate. Um, uh, we don't anchor our activities in one particular region. Um, Singapore is naturally uh, home turf and we have an advantage here. 
uh, but we've globally diversified our portfolio. Um, so the reason we've gone after investments in FTX or in Amber is because we've liked what the management teams are building. And in most instances, these are actually regional or global businesses. Uh, yes, of course, if something is anchored in Singapore, we would welcome that. Uh, why would we not want innovation in our backyard? Uh, we would love to support more and more teams here. Uh, we do look at crypto and blockchain as a truly, truly global opportunity. So actually, if you look at our portfolio right now, we've got exposure from the Americas to Europe, Israel, uh, South Asia, Southeast Asia, Greater China, Australia. Yeah. Uh, we've got pretty global coverage in terms of exposure. There's a little bit of a regulatory disconnect, though, when it comes to Singapore and how it regards crypto activities and, you know, how it regards the access for retail investors into crypto. Does that hurt some of your investments? Does that, that hurt some of the growth uh, exponential that you hope for this region and beyond? No, I mean, it doesn't really impact our activities. Uh, can't really comment for the government here, but what I would say is that every emerging space is going to have a lot of friction and noise around regulation. Um, it's safe to say that most industry participants would welcome regulation, but it takes time for even the authorities to really understand the underlying trend of what's happening and adjust and frame rules. I mean, I recall in the early days when e-commerce and uh, ride-hailing businesses were emerging, you suddenly didn't know how to deal with these businesses. Yeah. And it took some time. And yeah. we had to ask ourselves the hard questions as to are these businesses breaking any laws? And the view we've always taken is that as long as there's a clear set of rules and regulations, our portfolio company should comply with them. Yeah. And we hold a very high standard on that. Um, and in areas where there are emerging rules and regulations, we're happy to work with various stakeholders to move that agenda forward. Yeah. And the crypto space is still very new. People, I know gets, it gets actually disproportionate news cycles, I would argue almost. Um, but in many instances, rules and regulations don't exist. So businesses are being built in that vacuum. Yeah. And we're really confident and hopeful that regulations will develop and projects will comply with the applicable rules and regulations, something we keep very close track of. And finally, bringing it back full circle, 2018 crypto winter, and now everybody is talking about, is this that time, the bottom of the market? Uh, how low is it going to go? Um, in your view, is this an exciting time? Is this a scary time? How would you see this? So very exciting times. Um, I wouldn't comment on the specific events, but generally any correction when you've had such big run-ups are healthy. I mean, it's, it's a generic statement that would apply uh, across markets, sectors. Uh, for us, it's a very exciting time. It will give everyone breathing space, mm -hmm. including founders, to just step <laughs> back a little bit, focus on the problems they were trying to solve for creating some great companies, creating some great projects. Um, and we are very excited. Um, it may be a short-lived winter, it may be a long winter, can't really tell, but uh, very excited by the amount of talent that's coming into the place. I just came back from a two-week trip uh, in different parts of the world and uh, was absolutely wowed and amazed by what we're seeing in terms of the movement of talent into the space. And inevitably, whether it's in the region here, in Singapore, Southeast Asia, or globally, that means that you will see some very, very interesting work happening. So we're very excited, uh, irrespective of price movements. Um, if anything, actually, that will give a breather and maybe have some good, sensible conversations on you know where to take these projects. And for everyone else who is as visionary in this space and hopes to be, it's also uh, at a discount. Um, and that's another view of what's happening right now. But the enormous amount of talent in this space is extraordinary, I agree. It's extraordinary, and it's only the beginning. Actually, if you look at the number of developers who are Web3 developers, it's yeah. still very small. So this has a long, long runway. The long runway is longer than both of us. Um, so to actually be able to see the inception of what this journey could look like from your point of view, it's, it's been fantastic. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us on this latest episode of Word on the Block. I'm Editor-in-Chief Angie Lau. Until the next time.